At the, uh, at the Royal Free, we, uh, we have the Centre for Neurosarcoidosis. Uh, that's uh, basically a, uh, an outpatient uh, clinic which has evolved and developed over the last 16 uh, years maybe, um, which uh, is now situated in the Institute of Immunity and Transplantation, which uh, is a, um, a part of University College uh, and which is being developed. There's a huge big uh, building being uh, uh, built um, uh, to be opened in 20 2020, uh, which is going to uh, provide um, very important research into all forms of immune conditions, cancers and things like that as well. And uh, we're very pleased to be part of all of that because it's going to uh, uh, greatly help us uh, do more research into um, uh, um, uh, this uh, condition over the next um, five years or so. Um, it, um, uh, so all of the patients who are referred uh, come to see me um, and uh, we normally uh, have referrals uh, either from the GP uh, or from um, uh, the neurologist already looking after them uh, or sometimes from other uh, doctors like respiratory physicians or, or rheumatologists. Um, and uh, so some people uh, near, live nearby and they're happy just to have all their care here. Some people live very far away and what I try and um, uh, develop is a relationship then with the local uh, team um, uh, where um, I, I recommend uh, treatments or changes uh, or other investigations um, and then we all work together. Uh, to um, uh, to improve the patients uh, within uh, our um, department here, uh, we have a big uh, multidisciplinary uh, team. Uh, I do all the uh, the neurological parts. Uh, we have um, uh, two rheumatologists who uh, um, uh, 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 are expert in in um, sarcoidosis patients. We have uh, two respiratory physicians. Uh, we have an immunologist. We have a dermatologist who works closely with me uh, in a lot of different conditions. Um, and we have uh, a cardiologist who also uh, specifically understands cardiac involvement by. Um, uh, by uh, sarcoidosis, uh, although we often use um, our uh, colleagues at other hospitals like the Brompton, for example, where they also have great expertise and also at St. Bartholomew's Hospital. Uh, and then we have a whole range of other specialties as well whom we bring in, orthopaedics, uh, uh, neurological surgeons, um, uh, hepatologists for example as well. Um, and uh, what I've done over, over time is to try and uh, develop um, um, uh, interests in, in one or two particular people who then gain experience uh, in the, uh, the management of sarcoidosis. Endocrinology is another good example of that as well. We often uh, um, need to work alongside the endocrinologists, particularly if there's a pituitary um, uh, disorder with neurosarcoidosis, for example. And it works very uh, well. It's not that there's a big long line of uh, doctors and the patients have to see each one. Uh, some uh, um, uh, centres do uh, work like that, uh, but I don't think there's any centre for sarcoidosis that uh, that does that. Uh, it would be very time consuming as well. And I think so long as the uh, the patients know that the the um, the other doctors that we're asking to come in and help have a great um, uh, experience uh, in the treatment of sarcoidosis, then I think that. Works, um, works extremely well and so there's no aspect of sarcoidosis that we cannot uh, treat uh, at, at the Royal Free and the Royal Free uh, in fact is the, the only reason why I came to work at the Royal Free was because um, uh, the Royal Free actually started off as the main um, centre for, um, for sarcoidosis. There was a very famous, uh, very nice uh, man called uh, Grant James who um, uh, was a leading light in the investigation and the early research in, uh, uh, in sarcoidosis in the 50s and 60s. Uh, and then the, the Royal Brompton took over and really, really pushed uh, um, uh, research uh, with Donald, Mission, uh, Donald Mitchell and Ron Dubois, for example. Uh, and now we have uh, close links with um, uh, with uh, a lot of these hospitals, including the uh, the Royal, Royal Brompton, uh, the Royal London as well, uh, Oxford. I've close links with, and then uh, and then further afield, Newcastle, for example. I have close links with the with the people there too, where we do uh, uh, some research together.
when a patient is uh, referred to me uh, here, uh, what they would expect is that um, uh, that I would have uh, spent some time getting a hold of the background information before they come. Uh, so we often order the uh, the brain scans, for example, if they've been done elsewhere. Uh, we'd make sure that we have all of the uh, laboratory um, studies as well. Um, we usually um, uh, order the uh, lymph node biopsies or the lung biopsies if they've been done so that we can uh, get our pathologists to look at them here to make sure uh, that the diagnosis has uh, been correct. If there's a neurological biopsy, we always, uh, always look at that um, uh, ourselves because um, it's sometimes difficult uh, to diagnose it with certainty on a, on a brain biopsy. And we have a neuropathologist here who uh, is very, very experienced at, um, uh, at looking at uh, brain biopsies with, uh, with sarcoid now. So we try to do, get all of that done uh, in advance um, in order then that um, I have a, a more complete understanding of what to expect whenever the patient uh, comes and then uh, what he or she would do would be uh, to summarise the symptoms and we go through the results, we'd look at the, uh, the brain scans um, uh, together uh, and then I would um, uh, recommend uh, treatment. And um, uh, quite often I find uh, that patients who come um, uh, have not improved mainly because the treatment that they've received has not been quite aggressive enough. That's something that I'm uh, working on with the, um, the other neurologists in this um, uh, country. Um, and um, uh, I normally then simply uh, say, here's what we're going to do, and uh, there's an option then of having the treatment here or, or uh, uh, having it um, at near home uh, with me um, supervising uh, less often, for example. Um, and then we try and build up a relationship with the, the referring people so that they, um, uh, they are uh, uh, happy that, uh, that they can ask me, you know, uh, uh, what kind of treatment to give or, or how often it should be given or how long it should be given for, which is an extremely important uh, aspect in sarcoid um, uh, as well. A lot of the patients come here um, uh, for treatment. So what treatment guidelines are available um, uh, for neurosarcoidosis? Uh, the answer is uh, nothing at the moment, although there will be within the next um, uh, couple of years. Uh, I have a um, a paper coming out soon which uh, includes uh, treatment guidelines. The, the best way of um, uh, giving a proper treatment guidelines is to do what we call a consensus statement and that involves getting together enough people who know what they're talking about to agree on, on a treatment plan and then we write a, a document which obviously then has to be agreed by everybody um, and then the uh, the concept is that you know, if it's written by a series of experts, then it must be the best um, uh, form of treatment. And that is not um, uh, yet uh, arranged, but it wouldn't be difficult. Uh, it would come from here, uh, from uh, France, uh, from Holland, uh, and um, uh, from America. They would be the, the main uh, places which have uh, re done research recently on, um, on on the treatment of neurosarcoidosis uh, and it would be a matter of uh, arranging a meeting which would um, um, uh, which would allow that document to be uh, created. Um, there's still work to be done on, on uh, um, uh, how uh, biological treatments are uh, to be used and when in particular. At the moment, uh, there's still a, a sense that, um, uh, that they're used to rescue people if all the other treatments haven't worked. There's a, a concept of having a pyramid of treatment where uh, the, the strongest stuff is at the top and then you start at the bottom and work your way up. But there's, a, uh, there's also a concept where if you invert the pyramid as well, uh, then if you can identify people who need the top treatment right at the beginning, then why not give them the top treatment right at the beginning? It's a much more efficient way of doing it. In particular, uh, with uh, destructive forms of, of neurological involvement in sarcoid, it would be a, a much better way of doing that. And that's, that's something that would need to be uh, looked into in, in more detail over the next um, uh, a couple of years, but it would not be a complicated thing to um, uh, to address. Okay, uh, so the research we're doing uh, here um, is um, uh, we one of our main forms of research is, is that we've been looking at the pathology of um, of neurosarcoidosis. Um, uh, so uh, patients who've had biopsies. 
uh, we are, are looking at the tissue and we're performing new uh, research on um, uh, on the in, the kinds of inflammation which develop in those tissues, and then I use that information then to correlate it with then the uh, the severity of the disease and the response to treatment as well, and we're hoping that it's going to help unravel uh, th this important question about why. Um, uh, no, how uh, patients uh, can develop um, uh, neurological involvement um, uh, as well. The other um, uh, form of research we do uh, here, which is going to increase whenever this big new institute of immunity um, uh, is developed, is of course the immunological research as well. We look at um, uh, the, uh, uh, the white blood cells and cytokines in the blood and in the spinal fluid as well. Um, and we're hoping uh, to start some new research looking at the genetic makeup of the immune system as well, which will help to define um, why, uh, what differences there are in people who've got regular forms of sarcoidosis without neurological involvement and those then who develop uh, neurological involvement and then in turn those with a mild form versus those with a severe form. And if we can identify a um, a genetic uh, background to those patients, which is of course how the immune system is developed, then we can identify, potentially identify uh, those uh, who require important treatments very quickly simply by taking a blood test and straight away, not having to worry about doing big biopsies and, and spending a lot of time working out if they're responding to steroids or not, whilst meanwhile the, the disease is getting worse and worse. Uh, and I think that's likely to be very successful research. It's very modern and new. The techniques are, are uh, just uh, at the moment being uh, developed, but I think it's a worthwhile um, uh, thing to look at. I uh, am not going to uh, involve myself in, um, in you know, how sarcoidosis develops or anything like that. I think there are a lot of very clever people who are uh, doing that kind of research at the moment all over the world. Uh, I'm just going to uh, um, concentrate on the nervous system, which I think is the, uh, the correct thing to do. We're also looking at um, uh, epidemiological uh, research as well, um, and, uh, and in particular uh, trying to define um, if uh, there is some um, uh, reason in, from the point of view of treatment uh, in how people can develop uh, neurological involvement um, uh, uh, or uh, don't uh, develop neurological involvement. Uh, and that, uh, might mean uh, that we can identify patients early on who, in whom we could prevent neurological involvement if we identify them uh, quickly and say, well, these patients should be treated more vigorously in order to uh, prevent the uh, nervous system uh, uh, being affected as well. And I think that's going to be very important research uh, too.